y'all welcome back to my channel and if you're new then welcome today's video is just going to be me giving y'all some advice about everything you need to know about moving into an apartment on your own for the first time um yeah and i'm also going to show y'all how i budget but once i get to that part you know obviously you can just use the layout and plug in your own numbers and stuff like that my eyes and shit <laughs> But yeah, um, I also want to tell y'all, make sure that you watch the whole video so you can get everything that you need to know. And at the end, like the video if I was able to help you. Subscribe to my channel and also make sure you turn your notifications so you can know when I post. And yeah, also, if um, you get to the end of the video and you have any questions or um, you feel like it's anything that I left out, just comment down below. Or if you want to ask me something personal, you can just DM me on Instagram. I'm going to put my page right here. And then it's also always in my description box. So, yeah. Okay, y'all. So, before I get into it, I just want to mention that I reside in Memphis, Tennessee. So, um, some stuff may vary just depending on where you live at. Maybe, like, um, like, the process. But I think it's pretty much the same. The basics are still pretty much the same. So, yeah. I just want to throw it out there. So, if y'all see me looking down, I'm going to be looking at my notes because I jotted down a couple things. But, um, but I'm just going to kind of go in order, um, what I can. That I am going to go in order of, like, the process and, you know, how everything went. So, first, you know, once you make the decision, obviously, that you want to move, you need to know, this is the part where you need to have a budget. You know, like, how much do you want to spend on your rent? How much do you, you know, like, all that stuff. What bills do you already have that you are paying? So, if you're living with a parent or whatever, um, do you got a car note? Are you paying your phone bill? Like, you know, so you have to include all that. Which, like I said, I'm going to get into later on when I show y'all how to actually do the budgeting part. But you do need to have, like, an idea of what you want to spend. Um, and you need to save period like you're gonna need to save money for this process because first I, let me go let me start in order okay so kind of the first step would just be like i said knowing what your budget is and about how much you want to spend on everything um so your rent your lights all that stuff um i just asked my sister since she's been you know out on her own I just asked her about how much was her rent, and I kind of just did an estimate from there. Um, and if you don't know the exact price of something like um, a light bill, because that is something that fluctuates, I just give myself higher, like I put the amount higher than what I think it probably would actually be, because I rather give myself, you know, I'm rather, what am I trying to say? Okay, so let's just say my sister said her light bill was average $100. And I'm like, okay. And I put down for my budget for it to be like $130, $150. Just, you know, something. I raise it up so I can make sure, you know, I'm good if it's more than what I, I think it is, you know? So don't, like, lowball yourself when it comes to, like, like I said, bills that you're unsure of that's going to fluctuate every month. Your rent is going to be the same. So, whatever the rent is for the apartment that you want to move to, their rent is going to be the same every month. So, the first thing you want to do, honestly, is start looking for apartments and seeing everything that they're going to require for you to do. So, it changes for each apartment complex. So, um, the websites that I use was like Apartment Guy and Apartments.com. Um, and sometimes those websites are not 100% accurate, so you still need to call the apartments. Nine times out of ten, the number will be on the website, or you can just Google it. Um, and in most places, you have to pay an application fee. Mine was only $55. I had to pay a $100 admin fee. Um, and they actually had like some type of special going on when I first moved, so I didn't have to pay a deposit. But in some places, you will have to pay a deposit, so... Like I said, you need to know all this stuff beforehand so you can know what you need to save for. That's pretty much it for, like, that part. And But if you have, like, a cat or dog or whatever, you know, you got to pay for those things, too. Um, I think that's pretty much it. That was all that I had to pay when I started the process. My application fee and my admin fee. 
but like I said, it can vary. You might have to pay a deposit. You might not. You might not have to pay an admin fee. You just, you you know, you gotta look and see. Um, another thing. So when I first was about to move, I was paying a car note. I was staying at home with my mom and dad. I was paying my car note, but I knew that like in order for me to like pay all my bills and like do what I wanted to do I needed to go ahead and pay my car off so I saved like I pay my car note every month but I also saved another car payment so the same amount that my car note was I was saving it so I was paying my car note every month and saving the money and so once I got to the time I was about to move I had money saved up so I can go ahead and pay my car off so that way I didn't have to worry about that so if you had to do something like that just don't rush the process. This is like one thing I want to say. Do not rush the process of trying to move. You just got to, you know, plan it out and be smart about it. So once I finally, um, well, before you move, you're going to have to get lights cut on for your place. So this is something like I didn't really know about. When I moved, I had, like before I moved, because you have to get your lights cut on like a few days, you know, before you're about to actually move into your apartment. So I had to pay a deposit to get my lights cut on. So I had to pay $250 just to get the lights turned on over here. So there was like another um, thing like I had no idea about. So keep that in mind too. Like I said, just depending on where you live at, you might have to pay a deposit just to get your lights cut on in your name. Um, what else? Oh, another thing. We also move in. Some places come with washer and dryer and some don't. So either you're going to have to save the money to buy one or you're just going to have to look for an apartment complex that comes with washer and dryer. Um, my apartment complex, they have like a little laundry center where you can actually go and wash your clothes. Or they also have this program where you can rent a washer and dryer. So like whatever you don't know about just ask like no question is a dumb question if you just don't know so just ask them and your your whoever's is in the office they should be able to tell you everything you need to know um but my sister was gracious enough to lend me her washing and dryer because she moved right before i did and where she moved she had a washing and dryer and she ended up just letting me have it so i was like very grateful for that <laughs> So, yeah, like I said, there's just something else to keep in mind. It was also one place that I was looking at, and they was charging extra for, like, parking. So, you really have to look at what extra fees that these apartments try to um, try to make you pay, you know? I was just like, oh, why would I pay $50 for parking if I got to live here? You know, like stuff like that just did not make sense to me. But like I said, you have to just look around, you guys. Um, I'm trying to see if I'm missing anything else. Oh, also when you move in, you have to pay your first month's rent. So um, I move at the very end of the month. So I basically had to pay rent for a whole month because, you know, it was going to be... It was about to be a new month. I literally moved at the very, very end of the month. So, I had to pay my four months rent. Um, but if you live, I mean, if you move in like the middle of the month or something like that, they're going to give you a prorated rent. So, that's when you haven't lived there for the four month or whatever the case is. So, basically, it'll probably like, like I said, you move um, midway through the month, it's probably going to be like half of the cost or whatever. So, you won't only have to pay that. You won't have to pay your full amount yeah that's pretty much the basis of the process of actually moving and of course you're going to need to save money for other stuff if you don't have furniture i kept pretty much all my bedroom furniture from my mom's house it's just a few things that i got like this now and you know other little stuff that i needed but um you're definitely gonna have to save money for furniture furniture is expensive okay so yeah I didn't even get everything before I moved. I had my couch. I had all my bedroom furniture, but like tables and stuff in my living room and all that. Like I got after the fact, after I moved. But as long as you got your necessities, you're good. I think that's pretty much it. I hope I'm not leaving anything out. So the next part of the video is going to be the budgeting part. So we just going to get right into that part. 
Okay, guys, so what we see here is just an estimate. I have income versus outcome, and it's really just the basic of making a budget. What are you bringing in monthly and what is coming out monthly? I also forgot to mention that in my apartment complex, um, my water bill is separate from my light bill. So even though it's called MLGW, Memphis Light, Gas, and Water, I don't know why the water bill is separate over here. I really don't know. But I didn't question it because these this is where I want to live. So, <laughs> oh yeah, and I also I forgot about this too. I also pay, um, it's the monthly fee over here for like the security alarm. So, like I said, it might be you know a little different, and also the rent insurance that's only twenty five dollars where I live at. Um, yeah, that's what I meant to say. The um security alarm that's included in the rent. The renter's insurance is something else I have to pay over here. The renter's insurance and the water bill is separate. But yeah, you guys, so pretty much, like I said, this is just an estimate of, you know, somebody's, you know, monthly income and then the outcome. So this is just most things people have. You know, this is just the basics. Like I said, this can change. Maybe you still would have your car note. Um, maybe you got other stuff like Apple Music, like little stuff like that. I do include on my bills. I include every dime. So, but like I said, this is just an example. Um, this is pretty much your needs at the end of the day. Your rent, your lights, your gas money for the month, your phone bill, food. I put Netflix on there because most people got Netflix. <laughs> Um, my Wi-Fi, that's how much I actually pay for my Wi-Fi over here. Oh, yes, and also certain, um, apartment complexes, you can only get certain Wi-Fi and cable with them. So, my apartment only accepts Xfinity over here. So, that's what I have. Um, yeah, so then I have car insurance, um, the water bill, like I said, because in my apartments, I have to pay for that. I forgot to put the renter's insurance, but... Yeah, some places don't make you get it, but my apartment does. And I put, just put a credit card bill on there. So, like I said, this is pretty much just needs and not wants. And um, you also just, you don't want to try to live, like, too close to your income. So, y'all see, after the fact, there's still, like, almost $400 left a month. And, yeah. So, I feel like there's still, like, a decent amount to have after the month of paying all your bills. Um, but, yeah. I do believe in much sure some income, though. So, that's what I'm working towards. I make my wigs and stuff like that. So, whatever you can do, make your own business, do YouTube. That's another thing that I'm clearly working on right now. So, you can just have more because you do need to also have money you know, saved up in your savings account. And if you don't got a savings account, you need to have one. Because anything can happen, you know, just like when Corona hit. Um, If your car breaks down, my car broke down when I was here. We well, didn't break down. It was leaking. And it was so expensive to fix. But thank God that my parents, like, always come through. So my dad paid for it because, you know. <laughs> So, I'm so grateful for them. But, like I said, having some savings is, you need to have money saved up. If you don't have anyone in your life that you can count on to come through for you, to pay something like that, like hundreds of dollars to help you get your car fixed or something, you need to make sure that you have that money saved up beforehand. Because you don't want to get yourself, like, caught in a rut or stuck in a rut, you know? But, like I said, this also why it's okay. It's um important to have a good amount of money left over after the month. So let's say your car do bro breaks down and you have to Uber or Lyft. You have three hundred forty five dollars after all your bills are paid, to where you can still you know get to work or you know whatever you're doing. So yeah. Okay, y'all. So like I said at the beginning of the video, if I was able to help you out, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Cut your notifications on so you know when I post. And also, if I left anything out or you just have more questions, comment down below or hit me up on Instagram and I'll get back to you ASAP. And I'll see you in my next video.